Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm starting a new playlist about uh, studying religion. It says theology is a critical study of the nature of the divine. More generally, religion offers to any culture system of worship that relates humanity to the supernatural or transcendental. So I don't know if you want to call it theology or religious study. I'm just studying the different religions. So it says theology differs from, differs from religious studies that it focuses more closely on the study of God and faith rather than in critical investigation of religions. But to me, you know, I'm studying the different religions because I want to, most people want to find a religion that is more close to the study of God and their faith. So that's interesting anyway so i don't know what to call it but this is what i'm doing and i'm looking online i'm not just giving you my own information my own thoughts without looking on the internet and seeing what it says although i will throw my own thoughts in there so and they may not be right but it's just what i've learned so okay so i've got some tabs open that i thought might be interesting and so, and it talks about the Baptist history de denominations, different ones, it says. This one says it was formed by English speakers in Holland in 1609 to 1612. They believe as Martin did. So I don't know. And others, it says there's a, people, uh, it doesn't seem like they agree of who started the religion. So I don't know. And this one says at the beginning in Rhode Island in Pennsylvania, but then elsewhere. So I'm, you know, yeah. And some believe it started in England. And some trace their origins to John Spilsbury, who started a church in London in 1633. So, and then you go to Wikipedia. So I don't know where it started because it seems like they don't agree. And this one says Baptists form a major branch of Protest Protestantism distinguished by baptizing professor Christian believes only believers baptism and doing so by complete immersion. Baptist, because some people do it by sprinkling. They believe in baptism by sprinkling and some people want to be fully immersed because they believe that Jesus was baptized by being fully immersed. So that's what they want to do. I, I would think that's why. Baptist churches also generally subscribe to the doctrines of soul competency. The responsibility and accountability of every person before God. Salvation by just faith alone. Scripture alone as a rule of faith and practice. And congreg congregationalist church government. Baptist generally recognizes two ordinances, baptism and communion. I, I don't know if they take communion or not, but diverse from their beginning, those identifying as Baptists today differ widely from one another in what they believe, so how they worship, their attitudes towards other Christians, and their understanding of what is important in Christian discipleship. For example, Baptist theology may include Arminian, or Calvinist beliefs with various subgroups holding different or competing positions, while others allow for diversity in this matter within their denominations or congregations. Historians trace the earliest Baptist church to 1609 Amsterdam Dutch Republic with English separatist John Smith as its pastor in accordance with his reading of the New Testament. He rejected Baptism of infants and instituted baptism only of believing adults. Baptist practice spread to England, where the general Baptist considered Christ's atonement to extend to all people, while the particular Baptist believed that it extended only to the elect. Thomas Hewlett performed a distinctive Baptist request that the church and the state be kept separate in matters of law so that individuals might have freedom of religions. Hoodies died in prison as a consequence of the religious conflict with English dissenters under James I. In 1638, Roger Williams established the first Baptist congregation in North American colonies. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the first and second great awakening increased church membership in the United States. 
Swedish Baptists, Scandinavian Baptists, have or origins in the radical pietism movement that split off from Lutheran Church of Sweden due to Conventical Act Sweden rather than English dissenters that split off from the Angelical Church of English. Both reached similar conclusions on theology. Baptist missionaries have spread their faith to every continent. Origins. And so it talks about the origins of the Baptist Church. And you can pause it and read it. Because it seems like there's all these different ones. So... This one says, in 1609, while still there, Smith wrote a tract titled The Character of the Beast or The False Constitution of the Church. In it, he expressed two propositions. First, infants are not to be baptized. And second, anti-Christians converted are to be admitted into the true church by baptism. Hence, his conviction was that scriptural church should be consistent only of regenerate regenerate believers who have been baptized on a personal confession of faith. He rejected the separatism movement doctrine of infant baptism. Shortly thereafter, Smith left the group. Ultimately, Smith became committed to believers' baptism as the only biblical baptism. He was convinced on the basis of his interpretation of scripture that infants would not be damned should they die in infancy. Smith, convinced that his self-baptism was invalid, applied with the Mennonites for membership. He died while waiting for membership, and some of his followers became Mennonites. Thomas Hillis and others kept their baptism and their Baptist commitments. The modern Baptist denomination is an outgrowth of Smith's movement. Baptists rejected the name Anabaptists, while they were called that by opponents in derision, Macbeth writes that as late as the 18th century, many Baptists referred to themselves as the Christians commonly, though falsely called Anabaptists. Tommy Hewlett took over the leadership, leading the church back to England in 1611 and published the first Baptist Confession of Faith, a declaration of faith of English people in 1611. He founded the first General Baptist Church in Spitalfields, East London, England in 1612. Another milestone in the early development of Baptist doctrine was in 1638 with John Spilsbury, a Calvinist minister who helped to promote the strict practice of believers' baptism by immersion as opposed to effusion or aspersion. According to Tom Nettles, professor of Historical theology at Southern Baptist Theology Seminary, Spilsbury's cogent arguments for gathered disciple congregation of believers baptized by immersion as constituting the New Testament church gave expression to and built on insights that had emerged with separatism advanced in the life of John Smith and the suffering congregation of Tom Hewlett's and matured in particular Baptists. So then it, this goes on and on and on. And I don't want to read it all. Because I just want to touch up on some of the main things. But you can pause this and you can read it. If it'll let me scroll down. Because I have a lot of tabs open here. Let me close a few. Poof, poof. Um... And so you can pause it and read it. And then this says in 1845, the Baptism Congregation of the, in the United States split over slavery and missions. The Home Missionary Society prevented slaveholders from being appointed as missionaries. The split created the Southern Baptist Convention, while the Northern Congregation formed their own umbrella organization now called American Baptist churches. The Methodist Episcopal Church South had recently separated over the issue of slavery and Southern Presbyterians would do so shortly after. So, 
And then it talks about the Baptists in Ukraine and the missionary organizations, Baptist affiliation, memberships. So you can see there's all these different Baptist types of church qualification for membership. It says most Baptists do not believe that baptism is a requirement for salvation, but rather a public expression of one's inner repentance and faith. Therefore, some churches will admit into membership persons who make a profession with believers' baptism. So, and I remember when I was little, I, it, I, I think I was like eight years old, seven, eight, seven and eight years old at that time. The church, there was a Baptist church that one of my relatives went to and I used to go with them. At that church, at that time, you had to be eight years old to be baptized. And now they, they don't, I don't, I don't even think that church is in existence anymore. That one, because I think it's a different church now because it's been years. Because I'm old, even though I don't sound like I'm old. And so you had to be eight years old back then to be baptized at that Baptist church. And when you got baptized, that made you a member of the church. But I have heard some of the more recent uh, Baptist churches that don't believe that you actually have to be baptized. So it, it's kind of odd to me because to me, a Baptist church believes that you have to be baptized. So I think it just depends on the church and their beliefs. So. Since the early days of the Baptist movement, various denominations have adopted common confessions of faith as a basis for cooperative work among churches. Each, and then a lot of them don't feel like they don't, you know, because you have to be, there, so, so many times you had to be baptized to join this church, and you had to be baptized by this church to join that church, and you had to be, and then they've lost some of the, the paperwork for people that have been baptized because it's been years. So I think that they don't feel that someone needs to be baptized more than once so they may not force them to be baptized to become a member of their church but some of them might so because there's so many different ones i think with different beliefs so and you can pause it because i'm just skimming through this so and then i'm sharing my opinions which may not be true but those are my opinions and what i have run across so it says, Baptists generally believe in the literal second coming of Christ. Beliefs among Baptists regarded the end times include a, millenar a millenarism and dispensationalism and historic pre- Premillennialism, with views such as postmillennialism and preterism. <laughs> so you can pause this and read it if you want. So talks about religious freedom. Insistence on the immersion of believers' baptism is as the only mode of baptism. Baptisms, Baptists do not believe that baptism is necessary for salvation. And I've heard that lately. And back in the day, I believe that they believe that you did need to be baptized for salvation years and years ago. But now it seems, and, and so I, it might have just been that church and that just that preacher because now it seems like they don't believe that you have to be baptized for salvation and that throws us for a leap so therefore baptism is an ordinance not a sacrament since in their view it imparts no saving grace so because they believe that you are saved by the grace of God so which is interesting and then it talks about beliefs that vary among Baptists so which is interesting, and I'm not going to go into all that right now, because this is my first video that I'm doing in this section. So, like I said, you can pause this and read it, so you can find out some of the stuff that I'm not going to go over. But 
All right, so now I'm going to keep going. Oh, I guess I should scroll down so you can pause it and read it if you want to. Okay, 1995 passed a resolution that recognized the failure of their ancestors to protect the civil rights. Okay, and then Baptists were active after emancipation. So landmark crisis, modern, modernist crisis, criticism. So, and then this talks about the places where they get their information. And there's PDFs that you can get. So... Uh, you can click on those PDFs to see if they're still there and if you can get them. So that would be interesting. Okay, so now I'm going to the next tab. And hopefully I don't have problems with this video because I'm closing all these tabs. And so I did, went to different ones and I chose different ones. And... It says Baptist beliefs. These would include beliefs about one God, the virgin birth, the immaculability, the impeccability, miracles, uh, burial and body resurrection of Christ, the need for salvation, divine gra grace. So, And my tabs kind of... So Baptist beliefs are not completely consistent from one church to another. As Baptists do not have a central governing authority. However, Baptists do hold some common beliefs among almost all Baptist churches. Since the early days of the Baptist movement, various denominations have adopted common confessions of faith as a basis for cooperative work among churches. Then it has a list, uh, it says the following is a list of confessions that has been important to the development of various Baptist churches throughout history. These would include beliefs about one God, the virgin birth, um, the impeccability, uh, there it goes, miracles, right here. Vicarious atoning death, burial, and bodily resurrection of Christ. The need for salvation, although understanding of means of achieving, achieving it. How did I lose my place so fast? Did this click? Oh. <laughs> so anyway... Although the understanding of means for achieving it differ, it may differ at times. Divine grace, the church, the kingdom of God, the last things, Jesus Christ will return personally and visibly in glory to the earth. The dead will be raised and Christ will judge everyone in righteous evangelism and missions. In addition to distinctive doctrines of Protestantism, Baptist theology in general is committed to a... Zwingvalian interpretation of the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper to be reformed doctrine that the salvation cannot be lost following justification by faith alone. And to the rejection, the theological validity and covenant value of I don't know what that word is. So infant baptism. So Baptist beliefs are seen as belonging to three parties. General General Baptists who uphold Armenians, whatever. Soterolo so, soterolo I don't even, I can't do it. Particular Baptists who uphold Calvinists and Independent Baptists who might embrace a stricter version of either Arminianism or Cal Calvinism, but most, but are most notable for their fundamentalist position on the biblical. Yeah. So practices, Baptist practice believers baptism and the Lord's Supper communion as the two acts of faith obedience to the example and commandments given by Christ for Christians. Most Baptists call them ordinances, meaning obedience. To a command that Christ has given us instead of sacraments. 
Uh, many Baptists observe washing of feet as a third ordinance. The communion and foot washing service is practiced regularly by members of separate Baptists in church. So it, it, there's varying views, it says, because there's so many different. Oh, and then there's a group known as the Seventh-day Baptists who observed Sabbath as the seventh day of the week. I'd never heard of Seventh-day Baptists whose origins were divided, came from, so I had never heard of Seventh-day Baptist. I've heard of Seventh-day Adventist, but never Seventh-day Baptist. And it says, a large portion of the Seventh-day Baptists adopted the teachings of the Sabbath, which led to the formation of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. See, I didn't know that. How, how, did you know that? If you knew that, leave comments, because I had no idea. And it just goes to show how little we know, right? Because I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. And so this one may cause my video and voice to crack in and out because there's ads on the page. And when there's ads on the page, it messes up my video. So it talks about 10 things to believe. So hopefully my voice, yep, so there comes another. The ads mess up my video. So I don't know if I'll be able to see on this page. So it talks about the different things, different opinions of the Baptist Church. And I'm going to scroll through this quickly because, like I said, it's probably going to screw up my video. Because look at all the ads. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to see this. So, baptism. Um, strong believers in biblical authority. Different beliefs. The Lord's Supper is symbolic act of obedience. They encourage evangelism and missionary work. They're supporters of religious freedom. Um, well, a lot of people profess to be Baptists. So we're going to close this one. And then I'm going to close a couple other ones. And this one talks about 10 facts you should know about American Baptists. And it says, they believe Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, and the Bible is divinely inspired word of God that serves as the final written authority for living out a Christian faith. And you can pause it to read further if you want. For American Baptists, the local church is the fun fundamental unit of mission in denominational life. American Baptists partake of two ordinances, believers' baptism and the Lord's Supper. American Baptists believe that the committed individual Christian can and should approach God directly and that individual gifts of ministry should be shared. American Baptists take seriously the call to evangelism and missionary work. American Baptists support religious freedom and respect the expressions of faith of others. So... American Baptists acknowledge that God's family extends beyond our local churches and that God calls us to cooperate ministries. American Baptists have been called to be Christ's witness for justice and wholeness within a broken society. American Baptist Churches USA celebrates the racial, culture, and theological diversity witness within its membership. American Baptists heed the bi biblical call to renewal and the need for a vital witness in a new millennium. So that's what it says. And like I said, you can pause it and read more on it. That's what that one says. This one talks about Southern Baptist, Southern Baptist beliefs. And there's an advertisement right on the top. So my voice is probably going to cut in and out. So I'm not going to be able I apologize now if it is. Southern Baptist takes back to John Smith and the separate Separatist movement beginning in England, 1608. Talks about the authority of scripture. Bible is the ultimate authority. God's divinely inspired revelation without error. Baptism. Adult believers baptism. Um, the act of baptism pictures what Christ has done for the believer in his death, burial, resurrection. So a new birth. It, it Likewise, it portrays what Christ has done through the new birth. Baptism gives testimony to salvation already received. It is not a requisite for salvation. It is an act of obedience to Jesus Christ. 
So church authority, each Southern Baptist church is autonomous, operating under the Lordship of Christ through democratic process. Each member is responsible and accountable to Christ as Lord. Church officers are pastors and deacons. So, Baptist churches often vary significantly, especially in the following areas. And it talks about communion, equality, evangel evang evangelical, heaven and hell. Southern Baptists believe in a real heaven and hell. Those who have been saved will literally will live eternally in the presence of God in heaven, and those who die without being saved will go to hell. Um, ordination of women. Baptists believe scripture teaches that men and women are equal in value, but have different roles in the family and the church. It says pastoral leadership positions are reserved for men. I didn't know that. Perseverance of the saints. Baptists believe true believers will never fall away or lose their salvation. This is sometimes called once saved, always saved. The proper term, however, is the final preservance of the spirits. It means true Christians stick with it. It doesn't mean that the believer won't stumble, but an inward pull will not allow him to quit the faith. The priesthood of believers, it talks about regeneration, um, salvation by faith, says regeneration this is not merely choosing to turn over a leaf, new leaf but is a matter of God beginning a lifelong process change um, the second coming it talks about sexuality and marriage one man one woman the Trinity um, even though it says this it also says above it has different ones so it depends on the church I guess talks about the true church so we'll close that tab now and so do Baptists do Baptists believe in speaking in tongues for Southern Baptists to practice also known as glossolalia ended after the death of Jesus the Apostles, the ban on speaking in tongues became a way of distinguishing the denomination from others. So, I know way back, I know some of the, the Bible translations at the beginning, it says that the Bible was translated in many tongues. So, some of them might believe that tongues, the word tongues meant different languages and not what some people consider it to believe so you would have to talk to the different preachers in the different churches so it's but Pentecostal churches it says talk about believing in speaking in tongues so you can find out which religion if you believe in speaking in tongues you can find out which speaking in tongues so you can find out which churches believe in that and which churches do not so I don't know what the Baptist church is. It doesn't seem like they. So you can ask the different preachers and find out what they say. It says, although Southern Baptists generally do not practice speaking in tongues in public worship, many apparently practice speaking in tongues in, and I would think that says in private. I don't know, but. And this one says, why do Baptists believe about question? Why do Baptists not believe? So you can look that up. Because I don't have that tab open. And this says unusual beliefs. What do Baptists believe differently? They believe that a person can attain salvation through faith in God and Jesus Christ. Baptists also believe in the sanctity of the Bible. They practice baptism but believe that the person must be wholly immersed in water. This is a major difference between the Baptist and many other Christian denominations. So... Uh, what does Baptists believe in? Baptist member who share the beliefs insist that only it should be baptized and that it should be done by immersion rather than by sprinkling or pouring of water. Uh, strict Baptists are Baptists who believe in a Calvinist interpretation of Christian salvation. And you can go look that up. 
What do Baptists believe? But Southern Baptists, one of the most prominent evangelic, evangelical groups in America, have traditionally been associated with anti-alcohol position. So some of them don't believe in drinking. Um, for Southern Baptists, the practice ended at the death of Jesus' apostles. The ban on speaking tongues became a way to distinguish the denomination from others. Uh, the main difference between Catholic and Baptist is that the Baptist church is salvation through faith in God alone, whereas the Catholics believe in the same plus the belief in the Holy Sacraments as the way to salvation. Um, why do Baptists not dance? I never heard of that. Various Christian groups believe that dancing is either inherently sinful or that certain forms of dancing could lead to sinful thoughts or activities. And thus prescribe it either. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I never heard that. Why do Baptists believe about marriage? Marriage has been ordained by God and is a covenant relationship entered to before the face of God. The only marriage was grace. Baptist Church recognizes grace. Baptist Church is the legal union of one man. So I don't know. That's grace. Baptist Church. So you can find the Baptists celebrate Halloween. As Christians, we don't celebrate Halloween. We celebrate Christmas and Easter, the present promise of our different Southern Baptists, though you'll find that when it's Halloween, they have all these October fasts and all these things. And you could probably go to like three different churches a day on the weekends during October, maybe even sometime during uh, September and sometimes during even November to go to these fall festivals, Oktoberfest, and they'll be giving out candy, and they let the children dress up, and they have a, so some of them, I don't know if they don't believe in Halloween, but some of them, there's so many, you probably go, like, almost every day of the month, but it, for sure, like, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and Saturdays, and sometimes three of them a, a day, on weekends, and things like that, to, to go, do children activities and get candy and and I don't think it's just the Baptist churches it's a lot of different churches in the south they do these things they have a they have a thing for having children activities and they want the children to have fun activities at church and to be safe and to and you know so they they plan all these things for children but around October it's huge it's huge they have so many blow up balloons outside they might have a magician in the church They'll probably have people bringing in all these food for dinner and they'll have this, it might be like potluck chilies or they might have like um, chili with chips and Fritos and drinks and things like that. So, but yeah, they, they do, a, they'll probably have cotton candy, you never know. They have all sorts of things. They'll probably have a trunk or treat, probably a lot of trunk or treats on different days, but it won't just be the day of Halloween. So if you, so yeah, they're really big on fellowship and it's not just the southern baptist churches it's churches in the south i guess so it says what bible do baptists read it was um the new american standard i don't know see others king james version so the baptists believe in the trinity trinity and it says, shared doctrines would include beliefs about one God, the virgin birth miracle. But, yeah, I believe that Baptists, yes, do believe in the Trinity. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm almost positive. So, Baptists believe in this Holy Spirit, and I believe that they do. The main position of the Spirit, we'll see what it says, baptism among the Reformed churches. And many Baptists is that the baptism with the Holy Spirit occurs simultaneously with regeneration when those who have the faith in Jesus Christ receive the Holy Spirit are incorporated into the body of Christ. So, the name Baptist comes from the Baptist practice of immersion in water. It was coined in the 7th century. So, so there are some things. And I thought I had different ones here, but I don't know. Um, this one has 10, Russell by Russell Moore. It says 10 things I wish everyone knew about Southern Baptists. 
Because there's so many different. It says Westboro Baptist Church isn't one of us. And this is from 2019. Some people assume when they see Westboro Baptist Church with its hateful signs picketing and protesting that this church is one of ours. It isn't. As a matter of fact, Westboro pickets us too most years. They reject what we believe is the core of our belief that the gospel is offered to all persons. And instead they believe that God delights in condemnation and damnation. We are missionary people who want to see everyone, including people who hate us, reconciled to God through the gospel. That's why when I have a reason to write about the group, I usually do so with the Westboro Baptist Church. If I lived in a place called Westboro, I'd probably add a third. It's like we emphasize hellfire and brimstone, but probably not how you think. Southern Baptists, like all Orthodox Christians, believe in a coming day of judgment like Jesus and John the Baptist. We warn people of the eternal consequences of their spiritual decision. But some think that Southern Baptists think the judgment of God is reserved for people who don't believe or don't behave like we do. It says, one of the first things we learn as children is that all have, fall, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That includes us. And when we speak of sinners, we are speaking about all human beings except for one notable exception. We are defined by the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is good news. We share our faith with our neighbors and some missionaries all over the world because we believe that God has made a way for sinful humanity to be reconciled to God. We believe Jesus took on our humanity, died under the curse we incurred with our sin, and raised was raised from the dead and stands now as our high priest before the throne of God. Our lives are hidden in Christ so that... And you can read further because I'm just going to skim through this. So it talks about when there's a disaster, an earthquake, they are among the first to go help out. So Southern Baptists are committed to a believer's church. We don't baptize babies because we believe that people come into the body of Christ, not by physical birth, but by a new birth that takes place when one is joined to Christ in repentance and faith. Baptism for us is a sign of our identification with Jesus in death, burial, and resurrection, it says. So it says we don't agree on everything, but we're more united than you might think. Many think Baptists are always fighting, and there's some truth to that. We were birthed, after all, in a in descent from established churches, and we've all lived through all sorts of controversies. So there's a fight side to us. That said, Southern Baptists are unified around a common theology. We believe, for instance, that the Bible is completely true and is the Word of God. Our theological consensus is found in our Baptist faith and mes mes message statement. Since there are lots of other secondary issues where Baptists happily agree to disagree. We all believe in the second coming of Christ, but we don't all see eye to eye on the timing of the rapture and so forth. So, yeah. It says lots of us aren't Southern for the Southern Baptists. And it talks about the Mason-Dixon line. So... That's interesting, and you can read that. There are some things in our past we are ashamed of, it says. It says we're all sinners, so we're ashamed of some of our past, which is all people have things we are ashamed of in our past, so I would think so. It says we're more ethnically diverse than you might think. Among the fastest growing demographics in the Southern Baptist life are African American, Hispanic, and Asian American congregation. The most vibrant of our churches often include many languages and ethnic groups. And it talks more about that, and you can read it. It says we believe in rigid religious liberty for everyone, not just ourselves. So, which is also interesting. And it also says authority goes to autonomous, a a I don't know, it's in my head, I can say it in my head, but not a lot. Autonomous, autonomous churches, oh, maybe I'm saying it right. Governed by Christ, not a hierarchy. So, so that's interesting, and you can pause it to read it. But I just like covering the main things because it's already forty minutes, and I'm just skimming through these things. So, yeah. And then the last one I have is Baptist theology at the GospelCoalition.org, and it's an essay, I guess. And it should open. It says, Baptists believe in the Bible as the ultimate authority, a regenerate and baptized church, the autonomy of the local church, and religious liberty for all. Yes, it's an essay by Anthony L. Shute. So. But it has, you can see he has other essays. 
Lutheran <coughs> and Methodist. So you can go look for this and you can read it if you want. It says Baptists are one of the few religious groups whose inheritance dispute their own beginnings. So you can read about that and that's interesting. So it says on whole Baptists have much in common with other Christian denominations and you can read that. And it says there are beliefs that set Baptists apart from other denominations. And it talks about that. It talks about biblical authority. It says they're often called people of the book because of their emphasis on the Bible as its sole authority for faith and practice. They describe the Bible as infallible and many affirm the Bible is inerrant. So you can read more about that too. And it talks about church membership and professing faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so that's interesting. The, though they realize their judgment is fallible, Baptists look for a credible profession of faith before admitting persons to the membership. Admitting new members to the church may be as simple as affirming those who come forward during an altar call at the end of service, or it may be more involved with a personal interview or com completing a new member's class. So that's interesting, right? Believers baptism by immersion. So it talks about Baptists reject infant baptism on the basis of texts such as Matthew 28, 19, which presumes that only disciples will be baptized. In addition, Baptists neither saves nor promises future salvation. They thus they believe that baptism should follow conversion as it is an outward symbol of an inward grace. So Local church autonomy says it presents the local church as a final court of appeal in determining its memberships. Baptists do not empower any entity above the church as having authority over local church affairs. Baptists also operate under a congressional wherein the membership has a final word in matters governing the local church. And the, thus the Baptist church select their own pastors, determine their operating budget, and their own church property. And usually I think they have meetings on Wednesdays, uh, probably once a month, I'm not positive, where they all meet, like where you have the congregation, where you go to church at, and they will vote on different things, and they'll discuss different things, so... If you ever want to see something like that. A lot of the churches have um, meals on Wednesday nights. Wednesday night supper where they may charge a fee for um, each member. They may charge a limited fee for, it might be like, I don't know, $20 for limit. Like if you have a family of four or six or whatever, it might be like 4 or $5 a person. And then it might be $20 per family. So that if you have more than four people, you're only paying $20 and not an enormous amount. And they might include beverages and desserts and everything. So that everyone comes together to enjoy the meal and have the fellowship. And then you might find that often they have potlucks and things like that as well. Where people come and celebrate to have fellowships on Sundays and things like that and they might have outside get-togethers with potlucks or everybody go to the park and and do things together because they enjoy the fellowship and they enjoy if especially the Southern Baptists you'll find they just enjoy having things for the children to get together and for the adults to get together and to have a reason to fellowship so that's huge so anyway I hope you enjoyed this video and this is the end of this one. And then next time we will look into studying. Oh, I had some made some notes, I think, too, as well. Um, if I can get it open. But Baptist, the practice of baptism, but believe the person must be wholly immersed in water. Okay. And then they honor Mary as the mother of Jesus Christ, but they can... But they don't pray to Mary or anything like the Catholic churches do. And the, they don't believe there's a Heavenly Mother. I don't think most of them believe there's a Heavenly Mother. I think they believe that God is 
not married and that there's not a, I think the only one that believes that there's a heavenly mother is the Mormon church, but I could be wrong. Um, so, and both Southern Baptists and Roman Catholics, they said, believe in the salvation, and salvation of God is a free gift of gr grace. So, yeah. So anyway, thank you for tuning in to my video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.